All right, share love teeth here and welcome to the channel. And it's been a while since I put out uh, much content. I put out a couple song covers recently. Um, not too much in the way of gaming or core videos, I know. Um, at some point I do plan on getting back to that. But today I thought we'd have a discussion video and today we are discussing streaming services versus physical media. Um, physical media includes uh, 4K HD DVDs, uh, includes Blu-rays, includes old school DVDs, VHS, uh, any kind of form of um, actual something you hold in your hand versus digital. Um, and I don't know about anybody else. Uh, I did enjoy streaming services for a long while, but uh, there's a lot of annoyance that has been created uh, unnecessarily, I think, um, recently. And uh, with price increases, with all the different streaming services that are coming about, and anytime you have uh, a real corporate interest uh, and a lot of profit to be made, I, I think it kind of takes out the, um, the joy of it, you know? Um, they kind of always, commoditize stuff in a way that it just it's not authentic and it um, doesn't honor the spirit of filmography or you know in this case but uh, I mean it goes for the same thing across the board you know um, things start off good uh, by small companies and small people and uh, you know once the the, the people and running the show that have all the money get involved they they just care about the money they don't care about the art they don't care about you know so um i'm getting a little off topic here but let's uh, let's go over some of the pros and cons of streaming services to, to begin with um some of the pros obviously are, are it's convenient yeah you know you have all these different shows and uh, movies at, at uh, the click of a button um I would argue that it's become less convenient now that it's all being separated be between different services. You know, Netflix used to have a huge library and a lot of stuff has been slowly removed down. Um, um, so, it, you know, it is convenient. Everything's there in a menu system. Um, uh, you don't have all the clutter uh, of DVDs or physical media um, on the most part you have a pretty big selection uh, it could be argued it could be better um, especially you know like Netflix is probably the prime example because they're one of the, the first streaming services but a lot of content that they started off with that's is not there and a lot of movies and shows you would think would be evergreen um, get removed for whatever reasons, uh, you know, due to licensing and, um, also there's a lot of old content where the, the licensing is questionable and there's not really profit to be made. So they don't bother to put those movies up. Um, you know, I think of like, um, you know, all the black and white era stuff. You know, there's very little of that on Netflix, and I don't think uh, it would be too difficult for them to put on there, but maybe, you know, there's no um, profit to be made or something. I'm not really sure why. Um, it offers a good alternative to cable and satellite for, for everybody. Um, you know, we could go over the pros and cons of which is better on that, but for sure, um, you know, no commercials uh you could watch whatever you want what or not whatever you want whenever you want um which was definitely the argument to begin with like when netflix had all the content um it was hands down better than cable or satellite you know to watch your favorite show without commercials and to uh you know be able to go to specific scenes watch all the 
all the episodes in order like that was huge like that was so huge at the time um there's also exclusive content for each of these streaming services um I think a lot of the the exclusive content it has been pretty good, especially Netflix. I, I've I've enjoyed a lot of their exclusive content. This is gonna be a long video, so I'm gonna have to take a drink once in a while. One thing I will say is um, there's arguments to be made both ways on the exclusive content, um, because. It gives them reason to push their exclusive content, right? And over other um, older stuff or, you know, um, you know, if they want everybody watching their new, their newest stuff, you know, then they're not going to bother to put up these old movies like I was saying before. Um, I think of Amazon Prime. I know when I went originally when we had started with them they had all the clint eastwood movies and a lot of these old spaghetti westerns on there that for me i really 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 enjoy um you know the pacing and it's just like a it's like a more of a simple life you know a glance into a simple life and uh in a lot of ways, it was the superhero movies of the time. You know, if you if you look at uh, the way it's set up with these these teams of uh, outlaws and stuff, uh, very interesting. Anyways, but a lot of that content's not there anymore. You know, stuff that you would think, hey, Clint Eastwood should be on a streaming service at all times. There's no reason for those movies to not be there, in my my opinion. Um. So as I said before, less clutter um, doesn't take up shelves in, in your house or apartment or wherever you live. Um, and it's less impact on the environment, you know, all these plastic cases, CDs and all that. It's now just sent through a wire. Um, it doesn't have to be made physically and... Um, so there's definitely an ar argument to be made on the environmental impact. Uh, some cons. Now, price increases. Let's face it, prices keep going up. Uh, Netflix had a bit of a scare when they, um, they started cutting off friends, being able to use friends' accounts and all this. Uh, so they had a lot of people canceling and... Uh, so that maybe slowed them down on on their their personal price increases over the other guys but um on the most part everything keeps going up um and when you have all these different services and you have different content that you want to be able to watch um you know when you start getting to 60 70 dollars you're starting to, to, to be comparable to cable and satellite prices, which I think uh, was a huge argument for streaming services to begin with, and now it's less so. Uh, rotating content and moving content, which to me is very frustrating. Like that, like I mentioned, some things I, I would think are just evergreen classic movies and classic TV series that should be enjoyed. Um, moving from service to service or being removed and then put back. Um, I think of recently a, a Jura the third Jurassic World movie came out and um, they had removed a bunch of the old Jurassic Park and World movies from, from the services and then they had them for buy or rent on Amazon. So, you know, there's that, there's some shady practices going on there. And now you could, now they're all back on the services again. So to me, it's like they, they timed the licensing so that the license would expire, right? And then you, if you wanted to refresh yourself, watch those old movies leading up to watching the new movie, you would have to pay for it. Um, 
So so that was an interesting business practice that I, I, I've no I noticed personally. I'm sure it's probably been done on many there's probably many examples of that. Um removing content altogether. Um, you know, some there's a lot of stuff that just never either made it to streaming services or was there and it's no longer there. Um and I think, you know, if say your favorite show or movie um i would think that would be included in the price you know what i mean and um at least going into it you know now we're learning that that's not the case but um, going into it i thought that was and I, for a lot of people i think that's that's true um so some one of the cons for sure is no ownership um if you buy something physically, say, uh, you know, for example, here's some DVDs that I picked up recently. And I'm going to be doing a pickup video. This, these were all from a garage sale. Um, my, my personal opinion is if you have 4K and Blu-ray players and they're easily accessible in your area uh, for a decent price, you know, then by all means go that route um for me i already had a big dvd collection so that was the 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 route i chose to pick uh and in at least in my area dvds second hand are a lot a lot easier to find than 4k and blu-ray uh internet's required for streaming services so now if you if you don't have good internet service for, for me i don't think it's ever been a problem uh, that I've noticed, but I can imagine if you don't have good internet, that might uh, affect um, the resolution and the loading speeds and all this. Uh, but also, if your internet goes down, well, <laughs> you're tough, tough shits, you're out of luck, right? Um, whereas a DVD, you could throw in the DVD player, it doesn't matter, it's not connected to internet, it's not connected uh, legally to s some service. Um, so it's just always there and always yours. Um, lack of old content. So that's like I was saying before, um, I guess if there's no profit involved or something, or if they want people to be watching the newest stuff, they won't put the oldest stuff like I, the I'll I'll give one a good example is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon from the late eighties and nineties. Um, for my generation was huge, and I don't think there's any good reason for it to not be on any of the streaming services except for it would take away for from their new content that they're trying to push. Um, and I think recently they've they've put up some of the seasons, I don't know, maybe on Paramount or I don't know what service. But to me, it's like too little, too late. Why, why has it not been there from the get-go? Because you want to have people watching their newest series and your newest movies, which mostly bombed, in my opinion, but uh, I also just didn't have the interest to watch it either. Uh, you know, for some things, nostalgia rules and, you know, what you're accustomed to is what you're going to enjoy. And it's hard to enjoy a, a retelling, uh, you know, sometimes. Um, some of the cons for sure are they're capable of editing movies and shows. Now, we've already seen this in even physical media releases where they'll re-release a movie and have... It edited, especially Star Wars is like a huge example that probably most people know, uh, where they've went back to the old movies and changed scenes and whatever. And especially with the wor way the world's going with the uh, political correctness and, um, you know, I don't want to get into any of the topics, but what, what I will say is, you know, especially companies like Disney Plus, um, Disney's like leading the way on PC like they want to be politically correct on everything and 
I could definitely see them eventually going back to their old movies and then editing it out scenes and changing stuff. Um, but I, I don't, I could see that all the companies doing that too. So, um, you know, if you want to be able to see the movie as it was meant to be viewed, or at least the way it was released, um, you know, in a lot of ways, physical media protects you from them messing around with your, your favorite films or TV series. <clears throat> Sorry. So, like I said, long video, but I mean, it's a, it's a pretty interesting topic to cover. I mean, honestly, um, there's a lot of pros and cons with streaming services and they're getting greedy. That's it's just my opinion. They're getting greedy and greedy. And I think I could see physical media making a comeback because they're getting so greedy and people are just going to say enough. I don't want to go search through six different streaming services to find the movie or show I want to watch. Um, no bonus content. So this is a big one. Um, one of the, one of the, um, perks has always been it, the bonus CDs with the bonus features, the behind the scenes stuff. A lot of us, uh, and myself included, enjoy that stuff. Um, you know, I don't always watch it. Sometimes I'll just watch the movie and I don't bother with the bonus features. But if it's a movie I really enjoy, I probably will watch the bonus features and see what was behind the scenes and how it was made. And, you know, people could argue, hey, well, a lot of that's online now. So you could watch it on the streaming service if you care. Just go watch the bonus features on YouTube or something. My argument against that would be if they don't have any incentive to make the bonus content, you know, if they're not selling physical media, eventually they just might not even bother, you know, and uh, all that is going to be gone. You know, maybe we'll see small clips of house behind the scenes stuff, but as far as, you know, some of these DVDs have eight hours of exclusive content or behind the scenes stuff. You're not going to get that. Why, why would they bother going through all that trouble if there's no profit or no nobody's going to watch it? How many people are going on YouTube to watch that? You know, uh, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's on the Internet. But if there's no incentive to make it, eventually, you know, the new new movies and shows won't have it. Um, cons, definitely, now this is a big one, is only profitable movies and shows are being made, and only content that's pushing a certain agenda, which people with money have, want to push a certain agenda, so they're, like, they have the money to push into it. Um, it's really affected, um what type of content is being made. There's a really, really interesting um, interview with Matt Damon where he talks about um, not being able to make the movies that they used to be able to make and the movies he personally enjoys uh, making because the way the profit margins are set up now. In the past, you used to have a movie release in theater where you would make a certain amount of money. And then again, when it would release on DVD, VHS, 4K, whatever people would buy at the time, would be a whole nother spurt of income. So they essentially would have two, two premier releases where they can make profit from. Where nowadays, movies will go into theater and then almost go straight to st streaming services. And, um, you know, there are people still buying physical media and they still make it, but it's hardly, it's the, the percentage of people still buying compared to back in the day is minuscule. So the profit isn't there. There's no second wave of profit. Um, 
So that is to say, only stuff that they know is going to make money is being made. Also because the cost of these shows and movies keep going up. And they don't want to take risks. And, you know, you look at movies back in the 80s and 90s. Man, I really, really prefer the non-CG era. Uh, Like, practical effects just will always rule the day for, for me. And I know that's probably... I'm definitely a minority on that. Uh, there are people, a lot of people that would champion that out there, but there's, let's face it, we're a minority. Um, all right, so that's pretty much the pros and cons of streaming services. I mean, I'm sure there's definitely more to it than that. Um, last, I'll just go over some of the streaming services that I've used personally and just give you a couple of my thoughts on it. Um, Netflix nowhere as good as it used to be um and that's due to content being spread out now amongst other streaming services and also a lot of what you would have thought evergreen content being taken away a lack of old content um and all as good as their exclusive content is um it it takes away from the other content, I think, in a way. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And like I said, uh, prices are are going up. Netflix got that scare, so they're kind of like they they uh, pause their movement on that. But uh, Disney Plus definitely has not paused their movement on price increases. And in my opinion, I don't think they put out enough new. Uh, uh, quality content to justify the the price. Um, I think once you've gone through all the classics and all the stuff that you would have wanted to watch, um, there's very little after that. I mean, a couple, a handful of movies at the most and shows coming out each year that are, uh, that I'd want to watch. Um, so that's just me, but I mean, Amazon Prime. Oof. Oof. The the primary problem with Amazon Prime, in my opinion, is that you only have access to about 10% of the content on there. And they shove the other 90%, especially whatever is good out of that 90%, in your face at all times. Like, hey, come try this other streaming service. And, you know... um. It's kind of pricey to begin with, and then they want you to subscribe to all these other subscription services that are kind of attached to it. And I just wish it was not in the menu. Give me a menu system where, give me the only the content that I have access to, and you want to advertise for the other stuff, fine, but don't shove it in my face because it's annoying. I don't want to have to go through a menu of a bunch of stuff that I can't even have access to unless I subscribe for this other service. Um, But they do have. Out of the 10% that they do give you access to, they do have pretty decent stuff. Um, Not bad. Tubi. Um, You don't get away from the commercials. It's It's free. That's a, that's a bonus. I mean, there's that's the best price ever, right? Um, so Tubi is, uh, yeah, it's kind of like going back to TV because you're stuck with the commercials, except you don't have to pay for anything. So uh, pretty good service, I think. Um, although, although their uh, profit model is set up in a way where they'll just have to keep adding more and more commercials and more commercial breaks 
it's like YouTube. It started off with very little commercials. Look how many commercials we have now. And it's like 15 seconds, wait your 15 seconds and add two of two and uh, skip ad or, oh, oh, you don't have the skip ad button on this one. I like all these ridiculous games, uh, which Tubi doesn't do, but they have, you know, sometimes you'll have three commercials, sometimes you'll have seven commercials and, um, I could see them in the future slowly adding more commercial breaks and more commercials and so that could be problematic uh paramount plus more or less a newcomer to the game uh just another streaming service um i mean they do have a lot of good content that potentially but um who wants another streaming service we're back to cable uh prices and satellite prices at that point uh crave i hated the freaking menu system why when you search a show do you have to divide all the different seasons into different uh thumbnails just give me the one show and then let me go through the seasons uh, I found that so frustrating. I don't know if they've changed that or it's still the same way. Um, finding anything on there, I just... I, I found it not intuitive and I did not enjoy it. Uh, Content-wise, to, comparable to Netflix, I found. Um, but yes, the menu system, very problematic. Uh, YouTube, I mean, you get a lot of stuff that you can't find on the streaming services on there, like uh, Night of the Living Dead, uh, old black and white movies you could get get on there. Um, they've also recently started buy. Uh, you could rent, rent or buy movies or uh, shows on there. Uh, I haven't bought or bought anything or rented anything on there, so I can't really s say anything to the quality or is it worth it or I don't know. I, I just, I, I do watch a lot of YouTube and I don't pay for a premium. So I do have to deal with commercials all the time. Um, maybe it might be worth it in the end to just pay the 10, $12, whatever it is. Uh, keep in mind all these prices I've been saying, I'm, I'm in Canada, so this is Canadian prices. Uh, all right, so why in the love of good green up, God's Earth, am I collecting DVDs? In 2023, have I started back? Well, because streaming services, to my, in my opinion, like I, uh, the cons are definitely outweighing lately the pros. And I don't want to have to go back and forth from different services to find what I want to watch. So if uh, if it's something I really enjoy, I just want to grab it and put it in um also i think the appreciation for uh movies and shows and everything just having it always there on these streaming services at the click of a button and being able to change it at, at a click of a button um makes you less deliberate and makes you appreciate it less. You know, if I go over to the shelf and I choose out, I don't know, Ghost in the Shell, a uh, great anime, um, and put it in the DVD player, I've made a conscientious de decision to go to the shelf, grab it, put it in. And that's a, a lot more convenient than it used to be, you know, to go to the... I, I miss video stores anyways, but going to the video store and then you have to come back home and you can't go every day, it costs you money, blah, blah, blah. Nowadays, it's like uh, a lot of this, this this media is cheap and easy to get. You know, I, you could go uh, pick up DVDs at flea markets, garage sales, secondhand stores, uh, pawn shops. Um... And yeah, it's a lot of it's still easily accessible um, and easy to find. 
Um, and once you have it, you have it. It's there on your shelf or it's there, you know, and you have access to it at all times. Um, but there's still a conscientious decision to go grab it and put it in versus just clicking the button. And, you know, to me is you already went through that trouble to put it in your DVD player. At that point, you're watching it, you know, right? You're not going to say, oh, you know what, on second chance, second uh, thought, I'm going to go grab a different movie and go switch the DVD. You know, maybe you might do that, but probably not. All right, so what are pros and cons? Like I said, my, my choice was DVDs because it's easily accessible. Uh, I don't have a 4K player. I don't have a Blu-ray player. Um... I could probably easy, easily pick one up, but I haven't seen too, min too many of those uh, secondhand as far as the discs go. And um, DVDs, you can still find it easily all over the place. And like I said, I have a big collection. I had a big collection already to begin with, so now it's just more or less just grabbing s stuff that I haven't seen or, um, yeah, old classics, whatever. So, some pros. Cheap. Definitely cheap. Um, a lot of pawn shops maybe charge like a dollar or two. Um, secondhand places, uh, Village de Villar is a place, uh, and is a place here in Quebec. Um, it's like a secondhand store. Um, they're around two, three dollars, I think. Usually, they're DVDs. Uh, you could go to, um, yeah, thrift shops. Like I said, a dollar or two. Sometimes even cheaper than that. Garage sales, you know, fifty cents, a dollar. Some some people ask two dollars. Um, but on the most part, you're not paying more than three, four bucks for a DVD. Uh, unless you're going to some kind of specialty shop where it's in a metropolis, like I know in much I'm near Montreal, and there's some some stores that are charging like eight nine dollars for secondhand DVDs, which is essentially I guess eBay prices or something or online prices. Uh, but you wouldn't expect that most most stores are selling them dirt cheap, like uh, like I said, a dollar or two. <laughs> ownership now if once you own it you got it it's on your shelf nobody can take it away from you nobody can edit it nobody can change whatever it's on it um it's there it's yours uh extra content and bonus features now like i mentioned before um that's a kind of becoming a thing of the past and uh more and more if they don't have the reason to make it, they'll stop making it. And while you could find this content online at the moment for the older stuff, you know, down the line, we might not get that anymore. Uh, you get extra physical stuff. So like sometimes you'll get little booklets, you'll get little ads for different things. They have tons of different special editions with a ton of bonus stuff you could get. Um, little art booklets, cards, art cards, etc. Um, one thing I mentioned before is like a better appreciation for the movie and for the content. I think by going and grabbing it, even if it's just off your shelf, even if it's not down to your local thrift shop or wherever you're going to grab a movie, uh, even if it's just off the shelf, you know, the fact that you have spent that energy to go get it. I think there's an appreciation of that. And especially if you go out to buy it somewhere in the wild, maybe you have a memory linked to where you bought it. You know what I mean? And you could think, oh, I remember buying this at a garage sale for 50 cents or whatever it is. Um... Yeah, and I feel like 
when we have access to everything at all times, you don't appreciate it as much for some reason. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just, there's something about it. Um, nostalgic and it's also like a time capsule. So there's a lot of things that go into DVDs and old movies where you have movie trailers for other movies. Uh, maybe you have a menu with something that they made specifically. Like, I'll give you an example. I watched The Lion King one and a half. So I actually never watched this movie, believe it or not. Um, I grew up in this era. Let's see, what, what year did this come out? So I know, I, def I definitely watched the first Lion King and I really enjoyed it, but I just... I Any Disney fans like come on dude you don't know when this was released I don't know I'm pretty sure I I know I was like a teenager when it was released so I just at that point I had kind of moved on from Disney it just didn't really pull me in so for whatever for whatever reason I watched this movie for the first time the other day and I really enjoyed this movie and to give you an example the menu system like they had a whole video clip that they made specifically for the menu system and they had on the menu have uh, little meerkats popping out all over the place and I thought it was really cute and they had all the bonus features and everything I mean yeah you just don't get that um watching it on these streaming services and even the um uh, old trailers for other movies coming soon to, to home video and all this. Uh, it's just so nostalgic. I, I I just really enjoyed even just watching the trailers put a smile on my face and uh, I I think I would I would love to do a full remove review of this movie because it's so interesting. Um, how many movies can you think of? where they went back and retold the same movie from the point of view of a different character. Uh, I think that, you know, you could only really do it with probably cartoons because um, people age, right? And you're not gonna find, it's gonna be difficult to find a full cast to go back and do a retelling and then you have to reshoot it. Uh, um, it would be very difficult, but in cartoons, that concept worked very good, and I don't think I've seen it done too many times other than this movie. Very, very cool. Very cool. All right. Fun to display and collect. Now, this depends. Do you enjoy going to flea markets and to pawn shops or secondhand stores? If you If you enjoy that, then the collecting part is probably going to be fun for you. If you miss going to movie stores, um, this is probably, collecting is probably going to be fun for you, you know, because you go to these secondhand stores and sometimes they'll have two, three shelves full of DVDs to go through. And, you know, it's kind of similar to going through movies at a, at a, a movie store. So, uh, in that way, I think it's very nostalgic and it's, it's fun. And also... Um, you know, depending on what it is, I'll give you another example like this. Look at this Jurassic Park special edition that I picked up the other day. Inside, you have this pops open, and you have one. Oh, you have the three first Jurassic Parks in here. I mean, look how cool, freaking cool this box is. You know what I mean? Um, so that's something you can easily, you know, put that on a shelf. And how awesome does that look? Um, so it's fun to set up your collection. You know, if you enjoy categorizing and um, um, going through the covers and you know you have a lot of cool art you know like this movie i never even heard of i picked up at a garage sale the other day 
Sean Connery. On Jupiter's moon, he's the only law. Outland. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. Never even heard of it. But, um... It's very cool. And it, um, you look at a good example is VHS. A lot of people aren't buying VHS to actually watch it. They're buying it just straight up for the covers. And you look at some of the prices on these old VHS. My God. My God. No, no one would have thought. Potential to profit. So now this is like I just mentioned VHS. This is a good example. Um, people are buying VHS just to collect it. It's not for watching it purposes. So even if DVDs are arguably obsolete, there's a good chance that there's going to be a nostalgic wave uh, a couple of years from now where people are like, oh, I remember those DVDs. I, oh, I wish that I had that cover. And, you know, um, you look at, especially before everybody started transitioning to streaming services, all these companies were th throwing all these crazy special editions at us in order to try and keep us buying DVDs and whatever instead of switching over to streaming services. So they were throwing all everything under the sun in there. He had special editions coming with t-shirts, keychains, uh, you name it. All just to try and keep you up buying. Um, and a lot of that stuff is amazing. And collector-wise, um, you know, if you really enjoy a movie in a couple years, even just to have the little booklet and all that, I could really see it, it being collectible. And uh, VHS is a great example. Uh, you know, people are buying them for the covers. A lot of them. Um, so, you know... What's the difference between having this on your shelf and a VHS? Probably not that much difference. Um, preservation. Now, th this one could kind of be both ways. Now, um, they have a shelf life, right? So even if you're keeping perfect care of this and you never, it never gets damaged, it's always in the case, there's still a chance that at some point it's going to degrade and not work properly. Um, that's kind of an unfortunate reality. But, like I was saying earlier about them being able to edit digital content and change movies and remove them and um, having the DVD... Um, we'll see how, how long they actually last. They're said to have a shelf life of around 25 years. I know I have DVDs that are older than that and still work. So, um, you know, at some point they're supposed to get these little black spots and your, your DVD, same thing with CDs, a lot of this old media at a certain point, it's not going to work. Um, so the question is, is the case and all this extra little content and the CD just to look at it. Is that the collectability there enough for it to still have value in the long run? Even if the, the videos don't work eventually. And I, I think, I think so. I think, um, I think people collect a lot of weird stuff. So I could see people collecting DVDs even though they don't work. Just to have the cases and the little booklets and all that stuff. Um, but like I said, streaming services can't go and edit these. Once you have it, you have it, and it's preserved in the form that it was meant to be. And uh, they can't say, oh, uh, that was racist. Let's go back and edit that out or change what they said and all that. Um, potentially out of print. So like a lot, there are, a lot of DVDs, a lot of movies and shows that were just never brought to streaming services. So they're essentially what you would deem out of print because um, you're not able to find them in any other form. Um, you know, there's probably bootleg 
versions on the internet that you could find for a lot of them, but some of them you can't, you know? Um, so, you know, there's definitely a, a, a decent amount of movies and shows out there that you'll be able to find on DVD that you won't be able to find on streaming services. Um, so there's definitely that argument to be made. Um, some cons. Now, apparently, I, I don't know. I don't have Blu-ray. I don't have 4K. Apparently, their their image quality is actually even better than streaming services. Um, they have good re resolution, frame rates, and all that. DVDs, apparently, are slightly worse image quality and resolution than streaming services. So, no that is a thing for me it doesn't bother me i i could definitely the 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 quality image quality is definitely there enough that doesn't bother me space now this is definitely a huge issue for a lot of people they do not like the cutter clutter and they do not like how much space it takes now there's ways around that um one thing I did, which for some DVD collectors out there, probably going to yell sacrilege at me. Um, I I got a big uh, CD case that has like four rows. Uh, holds, I don't know, 150 or 200 discs. I don't know, some, some ridiculous number. But anyways, I uh, just put a bunch of my DVDs that either I knew I was going to want to keep um and not bother selling at any point and uh or movies that didn't have a case or a proper case or the case was wrecked whatever um what i would do is put put the disc in in a slot then i would take the cover of it i would cut the cover into a nice square and i would put put that there in the case in front of the disc so that i knew where each disc went and you still had a bit of the case and you know it looked a little bit nicer than just having the disc in there and i just got rid of all the cases i just chucked that in the recycling it saved me saved me like two shelves of space now i'm not saying you should do that hack up your all your dvd collection especially now now that I realize, okay, there is potential that these might be valuable one day, um, I probably won't do that anymore. Unless it's like a case that's ruined or I get a DVD that has no case, I will gladly put it in a binder. But um, on the most part, I'm probably going to end up keeping them in the case. But space-wise, I live in an apartment as well. So, you know, I have to be conscientious of that. Uh, my girlfriend probably wouldn't appreciate me <laughs> growing my collection too much. Um, but yeah, space, definitely an issue. Uh, shelf life and degradation of discs. So like I mentioned before, there is, even if you're taking care of it, this, this is like very sad to me because... I didn't think this was true. I thought, you know, as long as it you take care of it, it's in its case. It doesn't get wet. It's not affected by weather, or, you, you know, whatever. Keep it in the right condition. 300 years from now, your your great 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 grandkids could be watching it. Fortunately, from what I understand, that's not the case. Um I don't know exactly how long they're going to last. Um even if you have it sealed, yeah, I don't think that matters. Uh, from what I understand, it could still degrade and still eventually not work. Um, so that's something to consider. Um, DVDs in particular uh, are obsolete, quote unquote, to 4K and to Blu-ray. Um, so if you're a person that cares about image quality, uh, you know, if you have the latest TV, you want the best picture possible, then probably you're going to want to go with 4K and Blu-ray. Um, like I said, for me, it's a it's a matter of budget. 
um, 4K and Blu-ray are a lot harder to find secondhand. Um, and that's pretty much what it comes down to. I already have a DVD collection and DVDs are easy to find. Like I even, I'll even show you here. I have this big pile of DVDs that I want to do a pickups video on. So I grabbed this at a garage sale, Braveheart. Somebody paid $11.99 and then went and sold it, sealed, for 50 cents at a garage sale. Why did you buy it for $12? What were you thinking? You didn't even care to watch it? And then you just kept it sealed and sold it at a, what, uh... 6,000% loss? To me, that's crazy. That, that's just, that just shows how completely wasteful we are as people. Why do we waste our money like crazy? I don't get it. Like, we're so whack. We complain that we don't have enough money and then we waste money like it on stupidness. And I, I'll, I include myself in that definitely. I think we're all, everybody's guilty of that. Come on. Um, limited mainstream presence. So what I mean by that is a lot of the big box stores, even uh, tech, tech specific stores like Best Buy, um, but you know, Walmart, Target, uh, Zell uh, oh boy, I was about to say Zellers, my God, I'm old. Um, but yeah, a lot of these big chain stores just don't carry very, if they do have any stock whatsoever of DVDs and Blu-rays and 4Ks, it's very limited. Um, probably a tiny section in each of these stores. You do have specific specialty stores. Um, I don't have any in my area that are um, even video stores. There's no more rental stores. That's, you know, the ones that we're holding on uh, with the pandemic, that was it. That was the final nail in the coffin for them. Uh, in in my specific area, we had in Quebec, we had Super Club Videotron, which was our pretty much comparable to like Blockbuster, I would say. But it was a Quebec specific chain. I don't think they had them outside of Quebec, but they were still hanging on right up until the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and that was it. That was, that was it for them. So, and that was very, oh man, that was very sad because they had, um, not only the, the video rental area where they would have secondhand videos to buy and they have, you know, you go in and you have popcorn and you have all these toys and whatever, but they had, would always... A lot of them had microplays, which were a video game store, also inside of the Videotron. And um, yeah, it was just a very cool place to go. Um, and more and more we have less and less places to go. I mean, it's like go to work, go to, video, go to the grocery store and go home, do your thing. It's like what the world's becoming. And it's very sad because there's not a very, not very much social aspect to that. And it's very sad, I think. Um, new movies, especially for DVDs anyways, I would argue, are kind of too expensive. Um, I see both sides of the argument, argument because... Um, you have Blu-rays and 4Ks, so what I've seen recently, which are usually around, say, $25, $30, around there. Then you'll have just the DVD release that will be $5 cheaper, which is like 20 bucks instead of 25 bucks. I think 20 bucks for a DVD is probably still too expensive. Um... I get that the content on the DVD is probably expensive to create. And why would you give too much of a rebate? But, um, yeah, 
I mean, when you could buy a secondhand DVD for like 50 cents, it's kind of hard to justify spending $20, $25 on a new DVD. Um, but if nobody buys them at the second, same time, we're not going to have any secondhand DVDs to buy. So um, kudos to all you guys buying the new DVDs and Blu-rays and all that still. Uh, thanks, because uh, I don't think I would... Um, you know, maybe if it's a, a movie I really, really like, uh, and it's got to be a classic that's stood the test of time, not not just like some movie that just came out, um, maybe I would spend $25, $30 or more for some special edition, but uh, on the most part, I'm just not not interested in spending that kind of money. Uh, less convenient, definitely, um, versus streaming services. Like you, like I was saying earlier, you have everything at the click of a button. Uh, DVDs, you have to go either get it off the shelf from your own collection or you have to go find somewhere to buy it. Um, you know, not everybody enjoys going to flea markets or secondhand stores and all that. So, you know, if that's not your thing... Um, you know, then you're probably not going to want to go out of your way to, to search for DVDs. Um, gems are be becoming harder and harder to find. In the past, I'm sure you could have picked up, you know, people were just tossing all this stuff away. Um, now you go to, you know, a pawn shop or something, probably all the good movies are gone. I, you know, most it's mostly junk, and you're going through lots of junk before you find movies that you want to actually want to pick up. Um, so if that's not your thing, if you don't enjoy going through and shopping and going through the different movies, um, you know, it's probably not going to be enjoyable for you. And lastly, um, there's no two ways around it. It's wasteful. Um, they have to create the, the discs. They have to create the, the cases. The, and, you know, eventually it might just end up, or I'm sure a lot of them have already ended up in landfills. Um, you know, plastic is just not, it's not good for our environment. Uh, you know, there's no arguing of, uh, around, around it. Um, when everything could be just sent through a wire. Um, environmental impact is definitely there. Even if you're buying it secondhand, you know, which some people would argue, oh, well, if you're buying it secondhand and they're not actually making it, um, and you're just buying something that was already there, so you're, but it wouldn't be there to be secondhand if they were making it to be bought in the first place, right? So, um, there definitely is the environmental impact. And, you know, I think as as a consumer, I think the, the, the pros definitely outweigh the cons um, uh, for physical media. I think physical media is kind of the winner in that category because these big corporations and streaming services are getting greedy. They just want to make more and more money. Uh, they keep separating all the content amongst the different services, removing all the content, pushing their exclusive content. Um, so there's definitely a lot of cons, but um, at the end of the day, I, I, I really appreciate, um, physical media. And I, I think, I think it's going to make a comeback one day. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much where I'll end the video. I, I think, um, there's a, definitely an argument to be made. You might, a lot of people might say it's ar obsolete. Uh, I think uh, I think it's gonna make a comeback in a big way, and I think if uh, VHS is any example of uh, profitability, uh, I think DVDs are just just haven't got there yet. But 
So we're at the tail end of a good time to pick them up because you can still find them for 50 cents a dollar. Um, one day that might not be true. You know, one day you might wake up and everything's 10 bucks and up like VHS. Even crappy VHS sells for like five bucks and up. You would never think. Um, but yeah, so I wish you all a great day. Thanks for hearing me out and um, wish you all the best. Have a